apie Šventą Juozapo bendruomenę, bet pirmiausia mums reikia žinoti, ką reiškia būti mokymą. Salvation is free, but discipleship will cost you everything. Išgelbėjimas nieko nekaimoja, bet būti Jėzaus mokiniu kainuos viską. Salvation takes a moment, but discipleship takes a lifetime. Išgelbėjimas užtrunka, akimirka, bet mokinys tai viso gyvenime. Salvation is something God does for you. Išgelbėjimas tai, kad Dievas padaro jums. But discipleship is something you do with God. Bet mokinys tai yra tai, ką jūs padarote kartu su Dievu. There are many preachers will tell you, make a commitment to Jesus Christ. Daugelis evangelistų sako, padarykite įsipalygojimą Jėzui Kristui. But that's as far as it goes. But they don't encourage you to do anything further. Bet jie nepadrasina jūsų tolim daryti kažką. Very few people talk about discipleship. Tik labai mažai žmonių kalba apie mokinystę. And when people make a decision for Jesus, kai žmonės padaro apsisprendimą dėl Jėzus. And things don't work as fast as they would like them to work. Bet dalykai nesikeičia taip greitai, kaip norėtųsi. They get disillusions and they stop being devoted to Jesus. Žmonės nusibylė ir nustoja būti pasišventus į Jėzų. See, Jesus is not a salesman. Taigi, Jėzus nėra pardavėjas. He's not trying to sell you anything. Jis nieko nesistengia jums parduoti. He's not trying to talk you into anything. Jis nesistengia jūsų įkalbėti į kažką. He talks about it in Luke 14. Jis kalba taip Luko 14. In Luke 14, he makes it very clear that discipleship is something that's very difficult. Į ten toj vietoj Jėzus labai aiškiai pasako, kad mokinystė yra labai tai, kas Kažkas labai sunkaus. He's very honest about what it takes to be a disciple. Ir Jėzus yra labai sąžiningas, kiek kainuoja būti mokinių. A disciple is someone that worships Jesus. Is not. Is a person that worships Jesus. Mokinys yra tas, kuris šlovina Jėzų. He serves Jesus, he follows Jesus. Tas, kuris tarnauja Jėzui, kuris seko Jėzų. Because he believes in Jesus. Nes jis tik į Jėzų. But he doesn't just believe in him. Bet jis ne tik tik į Jėzų. But he lives his life in light of the fact that he believes in Jesus. Bet jo gyvenimas atspindi jo tikėjimą. So Jesus is going to always ask you, do you want to be my disciple? Taigi, Jėzus visada jums supaklaus, ar tu nori būti mano mokinė? And he's going to say it to us over and over and over again. Ir šito jisai klaus daugybę kartą. He continues to pound that nail. Jis tesia to vinės kalimą. And here's what the nail is. Ir štai, kas yra tas vinės? Do not quit. Do not quit. Do not quit. Most people say, oh, if it gets hard, I've got to quit. If, if it gets hard, it must not be God's will. People quit on God, they quit on their marriage. They, they quit on their children. Some people look continually look for the path of least resistance. Path of what? Path of least resistance, easy way out. If it's hard, they need to find another way. And everything that matters in life is hard. But Viskas, kas yra svarbu gyvenime, yra sunku. Everything that matters is costly. Ir viskas, kas svarbu, kainuoja. And everything that matters will hurt. Ir viskas, kas svarbu, is kaudins. And Jesus says, do not quit. Bet Jėzus sako, nepasiduok. Here's how he says it in Luke 14. Taip jis sako, Luko 14. Verses 25 to 27. Gali paskaityti, Renaldai. Taip. Tikrėjai mokiniai, kartu su Jėzumi ėjo gausias minės, atsigręžęs jis tarę žmonėms. 
Atvėkas atreina pas mane ir nelaiko netikant prie savo tėvo, motinos, žmonos vaikų brolių, sesirų ir net savo gyvybės, negali būti mano mokinys. Kas neneša savo kryžiaus ir eina paskui mane, negali būti mano mokinys. No one teaches about love as much or as well as Jesus does. Niekas nemoko apie meilę tiek daug kaip Jėzus. No one demonstrates love like Jesus. Niekas neparodo tiek daug meilės kiek Jėzus. Yet here Jesus uses the word hate. Ir Jėzus naudoja žodį neapikantą. Jesus tells us in order to be devoted to Jesus. Jėzus sako, kad norint būti We must hate our mothers and fathers. Mes turim nekesti savo motinų ir tėvų. Our brothers and sisters and children even our own life. Broli ir sėsirų ir vaikų ir gal ne visą gyvenimą. So what is Jesus talking about? Tai apie ką čia Jėzus kalba? He's saying that the relationship with Jesus Jis sako, kad santykis su Jėzu needs to be an altogether different category than any other relationship we have kad santykis su Jėzum yra visiškai kita kategorija, negu mes turim visus kitus savo santykius. Jesus is worth a full allegiance. Kas yra allegiance? Devotion and devotion. Jėzus vertas yra visiško pasišventimo. No one can be as significant to us as Jesus is. No one. Niekas negali mums būti toks svarbus kaip Jėzus. One commentary on this scripture says that uh, hate means simply to love less. Dar vienas komentaras dėl šitos ištraukos, kad nekesti reiškia mažiau mylėti. So following Jesus is to be a disciple's first love. Taigi, pirmoji meilė yra Jėzus ir būti jo mokinių. Behind this comes family and even our own lives. Ir tik po šitos meilės, po šitos Pirmos vietos yra mūsų šeima ir netgi mūsų gyvenimas. So all of our other concerns take a second place to Jesus. Taigi visi kiti rūpesčiai užima antrą vietą po Jėzus. In this passage Jesus is using biblical uh, language. Ir šito ištrauko Jėzus vartoja biblišką kalbėjimą. In the Old Testament there were two brothers. Senam testamente buvo du broliai. Jacob and Esau. Jokubas ir Ezavas. And in Romans 9, God tells us, O Romėčiams 9, Dievas sako mums, Jacob I loved, Esau I hated. Jokubą aš mylėjau, Ezavą nekenčiau. He said he chose to work through this family line of Jacob. Dievas pasirinko dirbti savo darbą per Jokubo liniją. He put him in the first position in order of priority. Jokubas ir Ezavas. Priority? The, the most important. Ah, Jacob did. Jacob was the most important. Ah, for God. Yeah, to ah. God. Yes. Tegi Jokubas dievui buvo prioritetas. He said he said he hated Esau, but he really, as we understand it, he didn't hate Esau. Jis sako, jis nekentė Ezavą, bet iš tikrųjų taip nėra. If you read the Old Testament, you know that Esau was blessed mightily. Jeigu skaitėt Senų testamentą, žinot, kad Ezavas buvo labai gausiai palaimintas. He had much cattle, much wealth and many wives. Jis turėjo daugybę turtų ir daugybę žmonų. Sometimes we think maybe if he had a lot of wives, maybe that wasn't a blessing. Kartais mes galvojame, that it wasn't. It wasn't, maybe it wasn't. Bet dabar tokio aiškinimo yra, kad... We have to examine that. Jis turėjo daug žmonų, gal jau nebuvo tai jau toks palaimintas. But that's exactly what Jesus is talking about here. But but and tokia kalba Jesus kalba šitoj vietoj. Putting things in priority is about hating. Sudėliojimas prioritetų ir čia jis tiesiog naudoja tą. Because the Bible tells us to honor our mothers and fathers in the commandments. Nes Biblija moko mus gerbti tėvus ir motinas ir mūsų įsipareigojimus. In Ephesians 5 says husbands love your wives. Efezijačiams penktamėjai sako, vyrai, mylėkite savo žmonos. Titus 2 says, wives love your husbands. Ir žmonos klausykite savo vyrų. And if you know the Bible, we assume that we're supposed to love our children and take care of them. Ir pagal Biblija 
But Jesus is saying his relationship is in an altogether different category than that. When we give our lives to Jesus, knowing or nothing is more important than that. We have to ask ourselves the question, who would you choose over Jesus? Or who have you already chosen over Jesus? When you commit yourself to Jesus, you are committing yourself to being having opposition from the world. And we need to expect that we, we are going to receive opposition even from our own families. But when Jesus calls us to be totally committed to him first, he's not a hypocrite. Jesus is the only one Jesus is the only one that can make this kind of request. And the scriptures, his own family thought he was losing his mind and they tried to take him home. All of his friends turned their back on him. Judas betrayed him. Thomas and Peter and others denied him. Jesus' hottest days were lonely. One more time. His most difficult time was that he was lonely with no one else. Jesus. His friends turned their back on him. And if you cannot say, I will follow Jesus, unless you can say that, and say, even if I'm treated like he was treated, um, you can only say that if you are willing to be treated like Jesus was treated. To be his disciples means to walk in his footsteps. Including all the way to your death. Jesus says, if you have to pick up your cross and follow me, you pick up your cross and follow him. You need to pick up that cross. And so many of us give so little to the one that gave so much to us. We're living in days where it's easy to believe in Jesus. If you want to go to heaven, just receive baptism and you're all, you're all set. You go to heaven. Do whatever you want and everything's going to be okay. We're all going to heaven. But between your conversion and uh, your resurrection is discipleship. We need to be always growing, always maturing in our relationship. We need to grow deeper in our commitment to Jesus every day. Jesus, Jesus is not like a salesman that's trying to get you to make a commitment to all these good benefits. And to overlook the fine print of all the obligations there are to belong to Jesus. 
Tam pritojusi pareigojimo Jėzui yra e, sąrašas įsipareigojimu kitų. Jesus shows up and says, I am God. Jėzus pasirodo ir sako, aš esu Dievas. If you want to follow me, jeigu nori sekti mane, people are going to hate you, žmonės nekes tavęs, and you might die. Ir tu net gali mirti. That's the cost of discipleship. Ir tai yra mokinystės kaimą. And there was a day when people understood that more, even especially in this country. There was persecution not very long ago. And we, we need to understand it could happen again to us. And we need to be prepared to stand firm in that. There's one missionary organization that uh, uh, sends missionaries around the world. And when they go off, they pack all of their belongings in a coffin. They put all their personal items in a coffin when they when they leave to go on mission work. Uh, they leave their things. They leave their, their personal items. They put in a coffin. Ah, It's very clear what they're saying. Saying, I'm gonna die. I'm gonna talk about I'm gonna talk about Jesus until I die. That may be a short time, it may be a long time. But it will happen. They would write a final farewell letter to their family. And they would leave with the missionary organization to hold it. And they would deliver the letter to the family upon the death of that person. I sometimes think all Christians should write a letter like that. Because you're going to die. You are going to die. It may be soon or maybe a long while, but you will end up in that box. So don't waste your life. Make your death count. Death count? Yes, make your death count for something. Make it important. Make your death uh, important. Okay. Don't quit. Don't quit on Jesus. Don't quit on your spouse. Don't quit on your children. Don't quit on your church. And don't quit on the opportunities God puts before you to serve Him. Live your life in such a way that when you die, at least your children will have something to be proud of. And your grandchildren will have something to talk about. There is something worse than dying. And that's a wasted life. One woman filled the coffin up to go away. One woman filled up a coffin. And she went on a mission trip. Uh, and here's the letter she left. You should only be opening this letter in the event of my death. When God calls you, there are no regrets. I tried to share my heart with you as much as possible. My heart is for the nations. 
I wasn't called to a place. I was called to him. To obey was my objective. To suffer was expected. His glory, my reward. His glory, my reward. The missionary heart cares more for some than think than some think wise. The missionary heart cares more for some than than some think wise. Cares more than some think wise to care. All right, I'll read it again. The missionary heart cares more than some ah, think is wise. Risks more than some think safe. Dreams more than some think are practical. Expects more than some think possible. I was not called to comfort or to success. But to obedience. There is no joy outside of knowing Jesus. I leave you and my church family in his care. The letter was signed Karen, age 20. So you're going to die. Do not quit. Never quit. Don't quit going to Mass on Sundays. Don't quit praying and reading your Bible. Don't quit on Jesus Christ. See, some have quit on all of that. And there's not one of them that is happy. There's none of them are happy that quit. And not one person is going to leave a legacy that is admirable. Legacy? Uh, heritage. Legacy. Admirable? Admirable. Admirable. No. They're proud of. A legacy that they're proud of. Leave a reputation that they're proud of. In Luke 18, it tells us to count the cost before we build a tower. Jesus is telling us before we make a commitment we need to count the cost do our homework sometimes we're committed to too many things we're better off doing one or two things well than twelve things very poorly. Jesus doesn't want a percentage, a percentage of your time and money. He doesn't want a. a percentage of your time and money. He wants all of it. And no one makes that kind of request other than Jesus. 
niekas nereikalauja iš tikrųjų taip kaip Jėzus. And no one has the right to. Ir niekas kitas neturi tokias so teisės. Don't go halfway and quit. Taigi, nuėjo pusę kelio, nepasiduokit. And don't blame everybody else when you do quit. Ir jeigu jau sugalvotumėt pasiduoti, nepadėkit kaltinti aplinkinę. And Luke, it says, if you're going to be his disciple, we need to give up everything. Luko evangelijai sako, kad jeigu rašėsi būti jo mokinė, turi visko išsižadėti. A disciple is a disciplined person. Ir mokinys yra disciplinas žmogus. Getting married is easy. Susituokti lengva. Staying married takes discipline. O e, išlikti santakoje reikia e, disciplinos ir užsispirimą. Don't quit. Nepasiduokit. Getting saved is easy. Being sanctified is difficult. Būti iš gelbė tai yra lengva, bet eiti šventumo keliu yra sunku. Having babies is fun, but raising them is hard work. Pradėti vaikus yra malonu, bet auginti juos yra sunkus darbas. We cannot quit. Mes negalim pasiduoti. In the New Testament there is a book of Galatians. Naujam testamente yra knyga Laiškas Galatas. The Galatians, I didn't know much about Galatians. Aš nedaug žinau apie Galatus. But the Galatians were from a place near Turkey. Bet Galatų žemė yra kažkur šalia Turkijos. They lived in an indefensible plain. Jie gyvena neapsaugotoje plokygumoje. There was no natural fortifications for them to fight their battles in. Ir nebuvo jokių natūralių reliefo užtvarų, kai jie kovodavo kovas su priešais. But they always held their ground. Held? They held. Jo, bet atsivaikydavo prieš pralimus. So how did they do it? Tai kaip jie tą padarė? A historian tells us that they fought in a very different way. Istorija sako, kad jie kovėsi kitaip. When they would go to battle, they would take their wives and their children with them to the battle. The soldiers would kiss their wives and their children and say, Daddy is going to war now. If I win, I take you home. But if I lose, you... You're going to change your name. The girls will be given to the other men's sons. And I fear what they will do to my wife. But if he won, he would take his family back home. Bet jeigu jis įlaimės, jis į savo šeimą parsivės namo. But these men didn't lose battles for hundreds of years. Ir šie vyrai nepralaimėdavo mušių šimtus metų. Because they fought differently. Nes jie kovėsi kitai. When you fight for someone you love, kai kaunėsi už kažką ką mylį, and for a kingdom that you belong to, ir už karalystę, kuriai tu priklausai, you fight differently. Today we replaced a lot of this fighting with video games where the young men fight on, on a video screen. We replaced war with video games. It doesn't take any courage. Men, churches where we save women and children and we fight demons. Mes esam bažnyčiai safe. We save women and children and we fight demons. Ir šiandien mes kalnamės su demonais ir tokiu būdu apsaugom savo žmonas ir vaikus. And we do not quit. Ir mes nepasitraukiam. Now I'm not looking to die. Aš neieškau mirties. But if it comes, bet jeigu taip nutiktų, I want it to count for something. I want, uh, I want it to mean something. Aš noriu, kad tai reikštų kažką. I want my life to be have an effect on people around me, especially my family. 
Aš noriu, kad tai padarytų įtaką aplink esantiam žmonėm, ypač mano šeimai. We have billions of years in eternity to be with Jesus. Mes turim visą mžinybę milijardus metų, kurios praleisim su Jėzu. We have only this life to serve Him. Ir tik šį gyvenimą turim jam tarnauti. We want to make it count for something. Mes norim, kad tai būtų vertingai praleistas laikas. We want to be courageous in the way we live our Christian lives. Ir mes norim būti drąsus gyvendami savo krikščionio gyvenimą. Remember, even if you don't have a family, you're supposed to te- protect women and children. Prisimink, jei neturi šeimos, if you don't have a family, even if you don't have a family, net jeigu neturi šeimos, tu turi ginti aplink esančios moteris ir vaikus. And we're all called to be able to fight demons. Ir mes visi pašaukti būti į galą skauti su demonais. If you're afraid of that kind of life, jeigu tokio gyvenimo bijai, you don't know Jesus. Tu nepažįsti Jėzus. Jesus will encourage you and strengthen you. Jesus padrasins tave ir sustiprins tave. Commit yourself to Jesus. Atiduok save Jėzui. And do not quit. Ir nepasiduok. Amen. 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 We need a break. Okay. Thank you. Uh,